Welcome to our quick guide to HuraVac. This is all about finding basic storm information. We'll cover what happens when the National Hurricane Center issues an advisory on an active storm and where you can find many of those products inside the program. This video is intended for users who are brand new to HuraVac and haven't yet had a chance to take our full training or watch our webinar videos, but we encourage you to do that whenever you get an opportunity. We're not looking at the storm or its forecast necessarily. We're more focused on the demonstration of how to use the software. Now, at the time this is recorded on the afternoon of July 7th, 2024, we do have an active storm, Tropical Storm Barrel. But when you log into the program, you will see different active storms and different current conditions, but you can still go back to look at Barrel as an archived example. The products you see here will be applicable to most storms in the Atlantic Basin that threaten the United States, but there are exceptions and caveats, so we invite you to dig deeper into our training resources and user guide whenever you have a question. So Huravac is web browser based. That means there's nothing to install or download. It runs off of Chrome or Firefox or Edge, whatever your preference. And you're going to get the best experience by using a device that has a mouse and that has a fairly large display like a laptop or a desktop monitor. And this is the view we see immediately after the program opens. I've entered my username and password, and then I get to this large tracking map. Now again, at this time, 4 p.m. Sunday, July 7th, 2024, we have Tropical Storm Barrel as our active storm turned on by default. This is at Advisory 37. Active storms in the Atlantic Basin are always going to be selected by default. However, there is worldwide tropical cyclone monitoring, and you may find that in busy times of hurricane season, there are many storms listed in the Active Storms tab at the upper left. The one that's highlighted in blue is called the Working Storm, and that means that when we turn on the storm tools, the colorful icons to the left of the tracking map, that's going to show data that pertains to whichever storm we have selected here. For storms that are outside of the Atlantic, you'll have to click that checkbox to turn its track on. Another product that's turned on by default when you load Huravac is called the Tropical Weather Outlook. That provides great situational awareness of disturbances that may develop into storms over the next several days. In this particular case, there are no disturbances or outlook areas that are expected to develop in the immediate future, so there are no colorful regions to show you on the map. So we'll close out of the Tropical Weather Outlook by clicking the X in the small window in the upper right corner of the tracking map, and that clears some of the data from the legend as well. So on this large tracking map, it works like a lot of other map applications where you can click and hold and drag to pan the map around. And there are plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out manually. We also have a magnifying glass zoom in the icons in the upper right corner and a few other tools where you can control the map extent. I can use the magnifying glass to draw a box around the Gulf of Mexico and quickly zoom into that area. So let's look at some details of the track. Where's our storm located now? That's going to be the icon that's the white circle surrounded by a heavy black line. The past track are these small squares connected by a solid black line. So we see a color theme in Hervac based on the sustained wind speeds. Blue for tropical storm strength, yellow for strong tropical storm strength of 50 knots or 58 miles per hour or higher, and red for the hurricane threshold. So where is the storm going? The forecast positions are connected by this dotted black line. And we also have colorful squares that indicate the sustained wind speed at these forecast points issued by the NHC. Now, whenever we see a white square, that indicates winds below tropical storm strength. Our legend at the bottom gives us a readout of the coordinates, the maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour, and the movement to the north-northwest at 12 miles per hour as of advisory 37. We can use the storm status bar at the top to navigate to an earlier advisory. We can either use the arrows or click into this menu to select an earlier issuance. Now the A at the end of this number shows where we had intermediate advisories that update the position of the storm, but the full advisories like 33, 34, 35 are when we get the major updates to most of the forecast products. For a very quick rundown of all of the hazards and the highlights from the forecast, we'll look at the text advisories in the toolbox at lower left. When we click that, a window opens over the tracking map, and there are four tabs. And the main ones to pay attention to are the public advisory, because
because this gives a high level overview of all of the active watches and warnings, a discussion and a breakdown of the hazards affecting land, and at the very end, information about when to expect the next advisories. There's some great information in the forecast discussion. This is where you can understand the factors that the forecaster is looking at, what we're learning from the aircraft reconnaissance, and at the bottom, the key messages uh, provide some excellent information you can copy and paste. And that's all the same information you'd see at hurricanes.gov. And these text products are the basis of this track and these uh, wind fields that we're plotting in Huravac. For example, the top icon in the storm tools bar, just to the left of the tracking map, is the forecast wind field or wind rings. And this shows the maximum extent of the winds in each quadrant of the storm. And just like the advisory points, it is color coded. So the blue shows the maximum extent of the tropical storm force winds and the yellow for the strong tropical storm threshold and the red for the hurricane force winds if we had those at this time. A quick look at the other storm tools. We have the wind swaths just below the wind field, the potential track area or error cone. Just below that, two options for looking at the wind probabilities followed by the wind timing. Then with the hurricane warning flag, when we click that, we see a small menu with options for wind watches and warnings, as well as surge watches and warnings. And I'll click the wind watches and warnings to show you this outline along the coast of Texas. And the legend at the bottom shows us what those colors correspond to. So there are hurricane warnings in effect for much of the central Texas coastline. To turn off any particular storm tool, I can either click that icon, or if it's something I got out of a menu, I'll have to click back into the menu select that row again, and that will clear it from the map. Just below the wind watches and warnings, I have two graphics related to the storm surge hazard. Now the surge products aren't issued for every single storm and advisory, but generally when we have a surge watch or warning in effect for the United States, as we do here along the Texas coast in this example, then we're also going to see the peak storm surge as well as the potential storm surge flooding maps. Now the potential storm surge flooding is always going to come in later than the other advisory products. It takes more time to generate and process an issue. So generally check for that about 45 to 60 minutes after the advisory time to get that information. And sometimes, especially when the advisory products are still coming out, you'll go to turn one of these on and you'll get a notification in the upper right corner telling you that that layer doesn't exist. It may just be that it doesn't exist yet and that you'll want to check back later on. So I'm zooming in a little bit closer to show you some other things we can do to tell the story. I'll quickly show you here in the resources tab at upper left, if we'd like to make out the state and county boundaries in more detail, we'll check this box at the top. Another thing I might do is right click to set a base location. It's the first item in the context menu. And when I do that, it opens my user preferences to tell me uh, the details of where I've clicked. And in this case, it's Harris County, which contains Houston. And there's many reasons why having a base location can be a helpful shortcut in Huravac. It helps you with points of interest. It helps you with uh, report generation. Uh, but for right now, the handy thing that this will do for us is put a little flag on the map that shows us where our base is. And also it links to the local National Weather Service office. I've closed out of user preferences. I'll show you one more thing you can do with the right click menu. Uh, which is to answer the question, how far is this storm and how far is this wind field from the Houston area? Uh, we can put range marks on top of this map, and that is the third item from the top inside of our context menu. And now we get these concentric rings with dashed lines around that point where I right clicked, around Houston. And we can see, if we zoom in just a little bit more, that the edge of the tropical storm force wind field, at least this estimate, is roughly 100 miles to the south of Houston. And the center of Tropical Storm Barrel, as of this 4 p.m. advisory, is right on this 200 mile range ring to the south of Houston. To clear the range markers from the map, I would just right click again anywhere in the tracking map and go back to that third item down and click clear range marks. Now, so far we've only been looking at everything at the advisory time, but we can see trends and see the forecast in motion by going back and forth in the storm status bar at the top. So let's say we want to compare this position and the wind rings to an earlier advisory issuance. We can use the left arrows or the menu in the top to go back 
two earlier advisories and see the progress of Tropical Storm Barrel as it moved through the Gulf of Mexico. We can also see how this forecast track ahead of it has evolved as the new information comes in. And we can see that rightward shift in the forecast. Another way to look at the trend in the forecast track is to click the Track and Swath Options tool in the Storm Tools bar to the left of the tracking map. And our fourth checkbox from the top is called Previous Forecast Track. And that plots either the last three or the last six advisory lines. And where they're tightly clustered, these previous advisories were very consistent, but where we see a little bit of separation, it shows us that over time, this forecast has trended to the east. And there are many other things I can change in the track and swath options, like labels and colors, and we'll get back to that in a different video. With the forecast wind field turned on, another thing I can do is animate this estimate out ahead along its forecast track. I can use the storm status bar at the top, I can use the menu or the small arrows to navigate forward with one hour increments, but I can also use my keyboard up down arrows to click forward in one hourly time steps to the point at which this storm is projected to make landfall early on Monday morning. Now, a reminder that this is just an estimate, especially when this forecast wind field gets over land. I'll use the menu to reset to the zero hour or the advisory hour of 4 p.m. And now let's look at some current conditions. This is our middle tab in the map layers at upper left. And we have many options here where you can uh, analyze the information that's coming to us from NOAA. So there are options here to turn on the current radar picture. Now with the forecast wind field turned on, the map is getting a little bit cluttered. So I'll turn this storm tool off and just see the radar by itself. We also have an option for a global infrared satellite mosaic and when we turn layers on, they stack up in the order that we click them. So right now, the satellite is layered on top of the radar. If we would like to change that, we'll use the Quick Layers Options tool, which is third from the bottom in the Storm Tools bar to the left of the tracking map. And here's where I can individually control the opacity of any particular layer and also change its display order or by using the arrows in the header to bring the radar data on top of the satellite data. And you can do this for any of the layers that you have turned on. And note, as I turn on these layers in the Conditions tab, I also get entries in the legend telling me a little bit more about what the colors mean and what time that product was issued. To turn something off in the Conditions tab, I would just click the radio button or the checkbox again to clear it from the map. There are many ways to look at the projected rainfall amounts over the next several days coming to us from the Weather Prediction Center. There are also layers to show an estimate of current wave heights, current winds, a number of things about the current and forecast river conditions, and a quick depiction of the fronts. And there's a lot we can talk about when it comes to reports. Hurevac has several different reports that can break down the timing of the wind hazard arriving in your area or various areas, and the uncertainty about how early or how likely that is to arrive. Uh, but a very quick way to access the very important information for one particular local area is right clicking. And the lower section of the context menu, we can create a wind timing report, either for the selected coordinate or for the county or parish in which we clicked. In this case, Harris County, Texas. And a report opens from the right side panel. And this pulls together information from many of the map layers and data sources where we can compare the deterministic and the most likely and the earliest reasonable time of arrival of that tropical storm force wind hazard. And it's one of the many things you can do in HERVAC, but this is a shortcut to find some of that critical information very quickly. We hope you found this quick demo useful. We also hope you'll have a chance to check out our other videos, especially the webinar week videos, which really go into a lot more depth about these underlying concepts and how you can put it all together and apply HERVAC for making informed decision timelines.